Joel 2, 28 and 29. Mickey and I are so very blessed to be here. Thank you for allowing us to be in this great district, and it's a privilege to be here. And though I canceled a number of meetings, this was not going to happen. I was coming to California. I've looked forward to it. You've always been a leading district in the United Pentecostal Church, and you're still there. And I wanted to be here with you so that I could be blessed. And then I get to walk in here and feel people that know how to praise and worship God. And I got to preach to people last night that didn't act like they were Mount Rushmore. You go into some districts, they just sit there and fold their hand. You people know how to preach with a preacher. And that's an honor. That's a compliment to you pastors. You great pastors. So they're going to have it on the screen. Now, I want us to all just sort of shout this scripture out. Can you read it with me? And it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your and also upon the servants and upon the handmaidens turn to somebody and say we are book of Acts church Say, you are a book of Acts church. Would you give a hand clap and a shout to the Lord before we see it? You may be seated. <clears throat> I tell you what we need to do. Let's stand back up just a minute. I'm just sorry, one of these weird ones, okay? Would you put your hand on your innermost being and I'm going to give a command like we do overseas. Everything in this house is getting ready to be baptized with the Holy Ghost. If you don't talk in tongues now, there's something wrong with you. Through the authority of the power of the name of Jesus. I command the baptism of the Holy Ghost to touch every elder, every person in this building. Receive ye a fresh touch of the Holy Ghost. Speak with tongues in Jesus' name. Speak with tongues in Jesus' name. Speak with tongues. Speak with tongues. Speak with tongues. Let it flow like a river from your innermost being. Speak with tongues. Oh, Brother Urshan said, let it flow like a river. Speak with tongues. Let it flow something else. <laughs> Baptize us with fresh fire right now. Come on, young people, speak with tongues. Come on, pastors, speak with tongues. Come on, pastors, why speak with tongues? Shout with a clap to the Lord. Shout, 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 shout. Let your faith go. Lose faith in this place. You may be seated. Lose faith. I lose faith in this place tonight. I lose faith in this place tonight. Through the authority and the power of the name of Jesus, I lose faith tonight. Let your faith go right now. I don't care what you've been up against. I'm not even near my message yet. I don't care how long you prayed for it. Tonight's the night. Tonight is the night. Get your hands off of my family. Get your hands off of my church. Get your hands off of my ministry. I lose faith tonight. You may be seated. Uh, 
Praise the Lord. You may be seated. Sit down. I can't sit down, sit down. I can't sit down, sit down. I can't sit down because I just got religion and I can't sit down. Well, go ahead, brother. Go ahead. Well, go ahead. Sit down. I can't sit down, sit down. I can't sit down. Sit down. I can't sit down because I just got the Holy Ghost and I can't sit down. Hakaya la mo se haya, rianda la bo se kahara la bahaya. You may be seated. Let's go at it. Let's see what God's going to do. That was a good warm up. That scripture I read is the prophecy of Joel concerning the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. And it's quotation by Simon Peter in his sermon at Pentecost in Acts chapter 2 is one of the greatest and most significant utterances uh, of God's word that we have ever seen. It's the fulfillment of a prophecy that is twofold. This is important. Listen closely. It relates to the nation of Israel. How that Israel would be reestablished and that Israel would come from the four corners of the earth. Isn't it significant? That this year Israel celebrated her 70th birthday of being a nation. So that part of the prophecy is being fulfilled. But it also relates to the church age which began on the day of Pentecost and will continue until the rapture of the church. The beginning of the church age, outpouring in Acts chapter 2, is referred to in scripture as the former reign. It's the consummation of the church age, just before the rapture of the church. And just before that happens, it is referred to as the latter reign. So the Bible assures us that there will be an outpouring of the Holy Ghost and a mighty outpouring that the former reign was great, but the latter rain is going to be far greater. There have been many glorious days in times past, both in the Old Testament and in the New Testament days. But there is nothing can even compare what God is going to do in these last days. The, boy, y'all here in church tonight. We're going to have fun tonight. Devil, you're going to have a bad night. These are the days of which we speak. The day arrived according to Acts 2, 23 and 24. And the Lord has given the former rain, but the latter rain he's going to pour. Verse 24. And the floor shall be full of wheat, and the flat vats shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore to all that has been stripped from you. I love Acts chapter 3. It is going to be a theme that I will drive home for the next 30 minutes. It's going to be my heartbeat tonight. It's Acts 3, 19 through 21. Repent ye therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. For when the times of refreshing shall come from the Prince of the Lord, and he shall send Jesus Christ, which shall before was preached unto you, whom the heavens must receive, until the times of the restitution of all things, which God has spoken of by the mouth of his holy prophets since the world began. 
everything in this Bible that has been spoken by the mouths of holy prophets and apostles concerning the church age is going to be fulfilled right before the rapture of the church. I don't have nine tonight to lay out all the signs of his coming. If you don't know Jesus coming is near, something is wrong with you. But he said, right before my coming, I will restore to my church everything that I have given the early church, I will restore to them. There is a progress in an outreach and development in the kingdom of God. The Lord never recedes. It's getting greater and greater and greater. That's why the prophet Haggai said, And the glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former, saith the Lord of hosts. And in this place will I give peace, saith the Lord of hosts. The apostolic Jesus name, book of Acts church, should be the prime mover and shaker in the last days. Don't you negate, don't let me negate what I said last night, that in California, 60% of people will never walk into a church. But let me say this to you, if we get the book of Acts operating, I don't want to take away from what I said because the Bible said that they praised him in the temple which is at church and then they also went house to house. So we're not going to stop going home and going from house to house. But if we get this stuff going on in the temple they're going to line up to get in our church. There must be a return or either a continuation wherever you are in apostolic ministry. The church cannot grow to its full statue and accomplish its purpose without an apostolic ministry. I thank God for our teaching. I thank God for our leadership. I thank God for Urshan Seminary. I helped raise the money at BOTT to keep that thing going in its beginning and its inception. I thank God for CLC. I thank God for Indiana. I thank God for Texas and any Bible college I'm leaving out. But you let me tell you, when you learn what the second toe on Daniel's image is, and you know what the book of Revelation means, you better have an apostolic anointing that rests upon your life, that changes our lives. Because the apostolic anointing and the apostolic church that opened this church age is going to be the apostolic anointing that's going to close this church age. At the end of this age, in the darkest time, I don't care how divided our nation is. I don't care how bad it is in Europe. I don't care how bad it looks. You let me tell you something. An apostolic revival right before the coming of the Lord is coming. And though our nations may be in trouble, our church is not in trouble. We need a return of apostolic preaching and apostolic authority. We need men and women of God that step out on the wings of faith and say, thus saith the Lord, and the Lord does what thus saith the Lord. Supernatural signs will follow. Wherever the apostolic Jesus name message is proclaimed, signs will follow. Last night when I talked about soul winning, Understand, in Mark chapter 16, verses 15 and 18, he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall... On Friday night, camp meeting, lay hands upon the sick, and they shall recover. And they went forth everywhere and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them.
Notice what followed the sign or began the sign is when they went, what I preached last night, when we proclaim the gospel, when we go into the world, when we start teaching Bible studies, he said miracles and signs and wonders are going to follow. God is ready to raise up the apostolic church in this day and time. He is getting ready to put this apostolic church on parade. He is getting ready to show off his gifts. He's getting ready to show off his church. We have lived holy and godly. We proclaim that name. And what we're getting ready to see is entire churches and entire denominations getting ready to look to the apostolic church. You may be seated. We preach separation and we need to preach separation. But the sad thing is we've only preached it by dress. Let me tell you, I believe in separation by dress. You have some of these young ladies, their hair were down to their calves. I went by those ladies. I said, thank you for allowing your glory to glow. Thank you for the great things you do. And I say on the behalf of a man that the ladies carry most of our distinctions. Ladies, we appreciate you tonight. You may be seated, but you let me tell you something. That's the only separation we've ever preached. That Old Testament church, when they had that tabernacle in the wilderness, there was a cloud by day and there was a pillar of fire by night. And whenever those uh, unbelieving people, whenever those other nations came across that tabernacle, they looked and said, those are not normal people. Look at that fire by night. Look at that cloud by day. It's time that God wants to raise up this church. He wants to put the apostolic fire. Look at them. They're separated. So tonight, I am calling the California district. Come out from among them and be ye separate. I'm tired of dead church. I'm tired of Pentecostal catechism. I'm tired of the same routine. It's time we have a separation that's known more than our dress, but by a demonstration and an operation of the power and the demonstration. Of the you may be seated. Abraham said, come here, servant. Come here. Where are you going? You're going to get my son a bride. You're going down and you're going to get Isaac a bride. He said, I'm going to load the wagons up. Get the wagons ready. Put all the gifts on there. And when you find Isaac's bride, you load her down with all those gifts and said, you tell her if she'll come. We got a great family waiting on her. That servant left and went down there and found, found Rebecca. And there she was. And he said, I've got something to tell you. There's a man waiting on you. His name is Isaac. She said, I'm ready to go. He said, well, I got some gifts for you. And he loaded up with all those gifts. And she said, well, let's go tell my parents. Now, that was a pretty good order, wasn't it? So he went to her parents. The parents said, would you let us keep her for 10 days? And she looked at her daddy and said, I don't want to stay here 10 days. I'm hungry for the Messiah. I'm hungry for the coming of the Lord. You know, Isaac had been waiting. He was out there on the side of that road. Caravan after caravan coming. All of a sudden, he looked up. And there came a caravan that had a bunch of gifts that he recognized. That's my bride. Because she has the gifts that my father gave her. And I tell you what, he's looking which one's which. Which one's my bride? There comes my bride. They baptize in my name. There comes my bride. They operate in the gifts. There comes my bride. They got the gift of prophecy. They have the gifts that I have given them. Tonight in this auditorium, if I'm going against what you believe, so be it. Let the superintendent straighten me out or you pray for me that I'll get worse. But tonight, I lose the gift of tongues. Tonight, I lose the gift of interpretation. Tonight, I lose the gift of prophecy. Tonight, I lose the gift of healing. Tonight, I lose 
the gifts in this congregation. It's been too long since some of our churches has had message in tongues and interpretation. It's been too long since we've had prophecies. Tonight, I am preaching against churches, preachers, pastors, Anthony Mangan, anybody that's not allowing the gifts to operate in our church. This is the greatest day that the apostolic church has ever seen. Paul went down to Mars Hill. He got to Mars Hill and said, sit down here. Let me tell you about it. He got with all those theologians and yeah. all those other denominations. And let me tell you something. Look here, here's baptism in Jesus' name. We believe Acts 2 and Acts 8. Here's where they got, they had joy and everything, but they still need the Holy Ghost. And he got there and he got to Acts 10. You know, all the angels are explaining. And all of a sudden, he didn't get nothing. He got just a, there was no church. Through all the philosophy, there was no church that you can find was established at Mars Hill. So he said, I learned my lesson. When I get to the next place, here's what I'm going to say. I don't come to you with enticing words of man's wisdom. But I come to you in the demonstration and the power of the Holy Ghost. Brother, we're loosing something here tonight. I'm talking about he said in greater works than you. When they walked through the city, their shadow hit people and they got healed. They prayed over these handkerchiefs and gave them to people. When they got here, they gave them to them and they were healed. They said, what's, you say, what's happening to Brother Mang tonight? I'm beside myself. Because I'm just crazy enough to believe that God can heal me and God can heal you. Paul and Silas limped into that city. The authorities of the most powerful empire in the world trembled. And they said, these are they that have turned the world upside down. And they've come to our city. And then they go into this line. I love this. And maybe you haven't thought of this, but I love this. The devil said, Jesus I know. And does the devil know us? We know he believes in one God and tremble. But can we say, did he say, Jesus I know and Anthony Mangan I know. Tonight, I want to shake him. I want to let him know that we have made our mind up. He can go to hell by himself. You thought I was going to cuss there, didn't you? I got it fixed out. You might as well look at the devil and say, you're not taking my family to hell. You're not taking me to hell. Jesus, I know, and I know you, and I know you. You say, yeah, devil, and I know you. Through the authority of the name of Jesus, I bind everything in my home. I bind everything in my family. Well, go ahead, brother, take your lap. If you look at referring to the Old Testament dispensation, it was based on a covenant engraven in the stones of heart. Paul challenges us by saying, if the ministry of death, everybody say the ministry of death. He was speaking of the Old Testament. It was that children of Israel could not look intently at the face of Moses because of what Brother Morgan preached at BOTT three years ago, because the glory of his face, which glory was to be done away with. Why should not the ministries that operates in the Holy Ghost not have that same kind of glory flowing in our face. Let me tell you something. We've been hit. We've been hit hard by the elders. I got that picture. My daddy's over there. I wish he was here tonight just doing like this. Told the church now, not joking here, so don't anybody feel bad at me, but I almost wish we'd have just stuffed him and put him in his chair with his hand up like that. 
I mean, just seeing him would help me out. If I could just look at it over there, it'd help me out. I know they're gone, but let me tell you something. I miss them. But it's like we're sitting here, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? We're going to have revival. Thank God. My daddy's gone. Brother Pugh's gone. Brother Urshan's gone. Brother Tenney's gone. But Jesus is not gone. We got some young men. We've got some preachers. We've got some elders that's got their mind up. We're going to build this thing. We're going to build the church. We're going to build the church. We're going to build the church. I feel like that tonight there's going to be some pastors leaving here that's going to walk in the glory of God. When you walk to that pulpit Sunday, it's not going to be the regular Sunday one, two, three. But there's going to be a prophetic anointing that's going to come on you. And that sermon that you had outlined, it's going to turn into a prophecy. And the congregation will prophesy. And there will be a demonstration all over this district of the power and the glory of God. That early church only had one thing going from them. They didn't own any property. They didn't own any buildings. But they had the Holy Ghost in fire. I tweeted out today on Twitter. I'm not on any social media but Twitter. But I tweeted out today, destitute of the Holy Ghost, nothing else counts. But possessing Holy Ghost in fire, nothing else matters. If we got the Holy Ghost operating, nothing else matters. It doesn't who's mad. It doesn't matter who's messed up. It doesn't matter who's where, who's what. If we got the Holy Ghost operating, we don't have to fear a thing. Would y'all praise the Lord just a minute. I need to rest. What made, thank you, you may be seated. What made thousands follow those apostles? They were fishermen and tax collectors and peasants who had been proven fearful and faithless and undependable. But the Lord worked with them and they got filled with the Holy Ghost and the multitude began to follow. We must keep that same Holy Ghost with signs following, operating in our churches. We need churches where the supernatural is natural. Well, we had one get out of the wheelchair, two blind eyes open. Well, so what? That's just normal here. Oh, really? Well, that's great. Next service, we're going to have the, we're going to put the deaf ministry out of business. Next service. It's not our machinery. I love this organization and I'm in it. I love it. I thank God for it. But it's not our machinery. It's not our crowd. That music and these worship leaders, you won't find any better than that. You go to... You go anywhere you want to go. You never find anything better than that. It's not our buildings. It's not our music. It's not our great orators. But it's the supernatural. You may be seated. Well, my mother hear me, but I, you know, I'm not the greatest English guy. I just, I just got out of high school, and I have no degree from college. I just graduated from Bolton and started preaching, and that's it. So I don't know all them prepositions and stuff, and have, has, and had. And my mother said a preposition is anywhere a rabbit can jump, over, under, besides, out, over. When I get up here and get anointed, I don't care where the rabbit can jump. You get your ears messed up, you say ain't, or you had have. If it's got the anointing and the power and the operation of the Holy Ghost, nothing else matters. G. 
Jesus never intended for his church to operate outside of the demonstration of the Holy Ghost. He never intended. How long have I been preaching? 23 minutes. He never intended. When you get to Revelation 7, that Ark of the Covenant, he said it's in heaven. He said in Revelation 11, he said when you see that Ark of the Covenant, there's thundering, there's lightning, there's power. And if we have the Ark of the Covenant inside of us, there ought to be thundering. There ought to be lightning. There ought to be power that's operating inside our life. It ought to be shaking our churches. It ought to be shaking our lives. tell you why because we got to have operating it's not the box thank God for our church thank God for the mercy seat that sat on that box thank God brother Emery for that mercy seat but nothing like it but that's not what moved that mercy seat the thing young people that moved that mercy seat was the three things that was inside of it manna which is the word of God the ten commandments which is righteousness and that rod of authority which gave me authority to pick it up and cast out every devil if we get the ark of the covenant with the three things inside of the ark operating in our lives there's no devil in hell that can stop you or your family or your church I'm determined to have it it's been passed down through the ages that authority Matthew 10 and 1 and when he called unto him his 12 disciples and when they met the district board, and the district board gave them their credentials, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Why are we called to preach? Why are we called to go to church? To cast out devils, to heal all manner of sickness and disease. Luke 9 and 1. Then he met the district board again all 12 of them and the district board gave them power and authority over all the devils and to cure diseases i'm better than jeff arnold i brag on the district board where i go luke 10 and 19 bore the district board behold i give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you I am preaching to myself. You let two or three issues in our church come up and here we go ducking our head. Or you let an issue in our family come up and here we go ducking our head. The devil has to understand that we've got our foot on the rock and no matter what attacks may come against me, I've got my mind made up. And devil, you mess with my family, you're gonna be in trouble. You may be seated. Acts 16, we love this scripture. We love this scriptures. And Matthew 18 says, And I say unto thee, thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. It didn't say gate. It said the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. What the gates were is this morning. That's where the mayor back in those days, the mayor and the city council would meet at the gates of the city. And that's where they would carry on their business. And the devil this morning, with all of his devilish demon imps, they met at the gates to plan an attack to come against me and an attack to come against you. But the Lord comes one verses later while they're planning all their attack. And he gives us verse 19. And I will give unto thee the key. We think he said key because sometimes all we know is Acts 2.38. He didn't say key. He said keys because he wanted the devil to know if you've got gates, I got keys. There ain't no gate that I don't have a key that I can't open. There is no gate that God hadn't made a key that you can't open. Devil, you got all your gates? Lord, give me that key. That key to depression, Lord, would you give that to me? That key of oppression, God, he's been hidden. Give that. 
That key of my kid that backslid. That kid of mine that may have got his feelings hurt. God, give me that key. The gates have been prevailing against me. Give me the keys to open up apostolic authority. And tonight, in the name of Jesus, I release those keys in this place tonight. You may be seated. My grandfather, this thing's been passed down. I'm third generation. My grandfather Mang and built a church in Indiana. Plymouth, Indiana was there for almost 60 years. Powerful man of God. Wrote for the Indiana paper. My popsy Gibson, my mother's. Give me just a minute here. My mother's daddy built 12 churches in East Texas. He built the first church in Lufkin where that big tabernacle is in Texas. Camp meeting have their camp meeting. He built the first church there. And he was building church all over there. And he had some people in his church that a two-year-old child drank kerosene. And that baby died. And they called the coroner over. And the coroner said, uh, he's dead. And we've got to take her or him. I forget whether was it him or her. And that's important. Especially in California, that's important. I just threw that in a little sidebar there. That didn't, that didn't cost y'all nothing there. I just threw that on the side. But he said, yeah, I'm going to, for them, if you'll help me, I may hand it to you here in a minute. I'm getting a little tired. I may just, we're going to relay here in a minute, okay? And she said, we ain't taking my baby anywhere. I said, yeah, we got to take your baby to the funeral. I said, you're not taking my baby. My pastor's not here. And said, he has to walk to get here, but he'll be here in a little bit. They've contacted him. My grandfather walked in there. The baby had been dead for almost an hour. My grandfather walked in there and looked at that family. And the coroner was there and the sheriff was there. And he walked in there with a little bottle of oil. I never, if, you wanna, if I can mention any of you young guys, I never go anywhere. My wife will tell you, I, this is like American Express. I don't live home without it. My grandfather walked into where that baby had been dead for over an hour. And my grandfather said, Death, there's not room in here for both of us. And one of us is going to leave, and it's not me. That baby threw that kerosene up, set up. That baby started eating. And the brother of that child came to me at camp meeting and said, that was my sibling. That's what we got. Brother A.D. Spears heard me preaching about my grandfather. He came to me and said, when I was six years old, your grandfather was my pastor. He said, I fell off a roof and crushed all of my, my ribs. And said, my mother said, we're going by Brother Gibson's house before we go to the hospital. And said, I went by there. He said, when your grandfather anointed me with oil, he said, I felt all those bones begin to crack and go back together. And they've been perfect ever since. That's what we got. I told my Aunt Nona, I went by about three or four years ago, and Mickey and I went to see my Aunt Nona. She died a couple years ago, and, and she, uh, she lived to be 101 years of age. I went by there, I said, Aunt Nona, I was preaching camp meeting the other night, and I told her about Pops in that kerosene. She said, yeah, did you tell him about the cow? I said, well, I've never heard of the cow. She said, yeah, yeah. I said, well, tell me about the cow. She said, well, we didn't have any food. And said, Daddy would come in from work in the field all day. He'd put on that white shirt. He'd walk 10 miles. He'd build that brush harbor and preach at night. Then he'd walk back after church. He said, then go to work the next day. He did that for weeks, but we didn't have any money. And said, our old cow that was giving milk laid down and wouldn't give milk. And said, your Uncle R.D. said, Daddy, take your oil and play for that cow. And said, Popsy took the oil, went over and anointed that cow. She said, honey, that cow got up and gave milk for three years. If God can heal a cow, God can take care of our situation tonight.
I was at Swamp Daddy's the other day eating. I say the other day, two or three years ago. Brother Morgan's favorite restaurant in Alexandria, especially during crawfish season. I was eating at Swamp Daddy's. There was a guy had long hair, nice looking guy across from us, he and his wife. And I said, hello, how are y'all? I'm trying to witness everywhere I go, trying to get this church out of church. And so I said, where do y'all go to church? They said, well, we don't really worship much. He said, I guess if I went, though, I'd probably go to that Pentecostal church over there. I said, really? He said, yeah. He said, are those mangans still there? I said, well, I think they are. <laughs> he said, well, well, that brother Mangan said, we had a band, had one of the goingest bands in the, in the late 50s and early 60s. He said, we had a going band here in Alexandria. He said, our lead guitar player got cancer. And he went down and he, they gave him just seven days to live. And said, that Mangan fella went up there and prayed for him and we decided to have a fundraiser for him and said, we had that fundraiser, we raised a bunch of thousands of dollars. Said, and his wife came to get the check at the fundraiser. And she said, I can't take this check. And they said, why? She said, because that man from the Pentecostal church came and prayed for my husband. And he went home from the hospital and he don't have a sign of cancer. I said, I tell you what, if, if I had a church through that much power, if them mangans over there, I'd go over and visit that church. They must have the Holy Ghost operate. My dad walked in one time, I was a kid, and they called, they said, Brother, uh, Mr. Dryden is dying, and he's in the VA hospital. My dad walked in there, but you can't live home without it. He walked in there with his oil. He was under, they didn't have that stuff in your nose in. It was old oxygen tents. Remember those things they used to put you up under? Man, you walked in there, it was up under there, and you was afraid to even lift it up. My dad walked in there and said, let me tell you something, Mr. Dryden. Your kids called me to come pray for you. I've never met you before. I'm going to tell you something. Said, if you'll tell God that you'll repent of your sins, and you'll let me baptize you in the name of Jesus, get the Holy Ghost, God's going to heal you and raise you up. My daddy prayed for him and walked out of there. And my mother turned to daddy and said, you know what you said? That man's only got hours to live. He said, I know what I said. And if he does what I tell him, God's going to heal him. He started repenting. Two Sundays later, he was in church. Daddy baptized Brother Dryden. All of his kids, they got the Holy Ghost because you can't argue with a demonstration and the power of the Holy Ghost. So my grandfather had it, my daddy had it, I decided I was gonna get it. I'm not gonna leave it to the previous generation. I'm not gonna sit around talking about they had it. You can live in the past all you want to. I don't plan on living in the past. I plan on living in the present and I plan on leaving something for the future that believes in apostolic revival. The lady that takes care of our kid, Lenore. We walked in on a Sunday, and the doctor said, I mean, just point blank told Mickey and I. It shocked us. Lenore is such a great lady. She took care of Brother and Sister Hershey until, until they passed away. Then she moved to Ellick, took care of my family, and still there with us. The doctor said she had blood clots in the vein that was supposed to be uh, returning her blood back to her heart is not there. And said, we can't spare her leg. We're going to cut it off. What I don't leave home without. I pulled it out. I said, I'm going to call on the God of Gibson and Mangan, and I'm going to call on the God of my father, and I'm going to call on the name of Jesus. And I anointed her. The doctor came in the next day, said, Mrs. Lenora, there's been a drastic change. Said, everything's back to normal. You can go home. You may be seated. You know what? You know what I'm going to do right here? I'm going to tell about that dream. I wasn't planning on it maybe then. I'm going to tell about it right here. Night before last, I was in the Holiday Inn right here, and, and I don't have, I, I mean, I've only had, like I told you, four or five dreams that I consider spiritual dreams. And, and the other night I dreamed, and I woke up talking in tongues, and, and what I dreamed is I was at Brother Tinney's funeral. Of course, that just happened a couple of weeks ago. And Brother Tinney spun around. He, he, he rose from the dead just like that, Brother Shepherds. I mean, he rose, and he turned to me, and he said, Anthony, and I went, oh, Brother Tinney, Brother Tinney, Brother Tinney. 
And I screamed to the congregation, people, he's alive, he's alive. And they went, I said, no, people, he's alive. And then all of a sudden, Brother Morgan, who's always spoke a word into our church, and he started the apostle of the POA. He was in the balcony of, I look, I mean the baptistry of our church, and he had a mic. And he was screaming, these things are going to happen when we have holiness unto God. God's getting ready to give us these things when we have holiness. And the microphone wasn't turned loud enough. And I was screaming to the sound man, turn up his mic, turn up his mic. And I started talking in tongues. And when Mickey woke me up, I was talking in tongues. And the reason why I told you this right here is with all these miracles that are happening, we can't just pat a cake for Jesus. There ought to be a shout in this congregation. There ought to be a voice that comes up. There ought to be something that comes up. There ought to be a congregation. There ought to be a Hallelujah. Preach it out. Hallelujah. There ought to be a shout in our midst. Brother Mullen, there ought to be a shout and a dance. When somebody's healed of cancer, there ought to be a celebration. Brother Sanders, when somebody is set for it, there ought to be a celebration. When we heal somebody. Well, go ahead, district board member. Get down there and throw you a dance right now. Throw it down. Put the camera on him right there. Go ahead, buddy. Go ahead. If you've ever been healed, praise God like you ain't ever praised him. If you've ever been healed, do something you've never done right now. Go ahead, do something you've never done. Dance with a shout. Dance with a shout. Dance with a shout. Dance with a shout. with a shout get out and dance get your breakthrough right now those of us been bound by depression or oppression or your family dance your way out of it right now shout your way out of it right now proclaim the name of Jesus right now If he's ever healed you, praise him like he deserves to be praised. If he saved you, praise him. Let's quit just pat a cake in for Jesus. If it was a headache, high blood pressure, or cancer, it doesn't matter. If God's healed you, praise him. I receive the word of the Lord. I receive the word of the Lord. I receive the word of the Lord. Everybody lay hands on somebody like Brother Sanders is me right now. Lay your hands on somebody. Speak the gift of faith. There's going to be healings take place right now. Release it. I speak healing into this place right now. I speak deliverance. Speak the word of faith right now. I speak deliverance into this place right now.
It sounds like Niagara Falls in here. Let it loose. Come on, turn and rate. Pray for somebody. Just a, this is the moment that healings are taking place. This is a divine visitation of God right now. This is a divine visitation of God right now. Receive your healing. Come on, young people. Come on, hyphen. You got it. Don't wait for an elder to do it. Lay hands on people. Hey, hyphen young people. I want you on the platform with me. All hyphen young people, come to the platform. We're going to transfer something to y'all tonight. All hyphen young people, come to the platform. Lay your hands on those ladies. Go ahead, you got it. You got it. Lay your hands on her. Lay your hands on her. Come on, let the transfer of power go. Lay your hands on her. Well, go ahead. Go ahead. Speak the word. Release the gifts. I release in you anointing of the Holy Ghost. I impart to you the apostolic authority. I release the anointing of God in you. I release the power and the unction of the Holy Ghost in this place. I said, come on, young people, release it. Let that river flow. You've got it. You're the now generation. We're not waiting till tomorrow. You got it now. <laughs> 